Psalms 119 verses 153. Rish, or Rish. Salvation in the word. <clears throat> Consider my affliction. Now we've been doing last time, 145 to 152, we're in prayer. And we're still pleading to God. We're in troubles. We're in problems. And deliver me. Salvation from the affliction. We read in verse 146. Save me. For I do not forget thy law. Even in affliction. I'm going to be faithful to the word. Because what are you going to do? Quit. The Bible says, for the born-again Christian, all they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. So, the first persecution, what are you going to do? You're going to stop reading your Bible? You won't be a Christian any longer. You're not, your Christianity ain't going to last. Because the more you're in the Bible, the more conflict you're going to get. Jesus gave a parable twice of a guy who, who went out and sowed seed, the word. And one of the things, the cares of the world and uh, riches choked the word. And there was another one that, uh, persecution against the word. And the plant didn't, grow, didn't produce any more fruit after that. Every day you should be in the Word no matter what. Plead my cause and deliver me. Salvation. Get me out of. Save me. Quicken me means to be made alive according to thy Word. And we read some Proverbs tonight. If you do right, you're not going to be, your root is not going to be removed. You're going to be settled on the path of righteousness. So studying and rightly dividing the word of God, you can find a passage in the Bible if it's correct. And polite, apply it to your life. To God say, God, doesn't the Bible say this? But you better be very careful. It may not be to you, the passage you're quoting. It may be to a Jew. And think about what Paul went through. The great apostle Paul. And yet, one problem he mentions in the Bible, and God says, no, I'm not going to relieve you. And he asks three times. Well, when he gets to heaven, think about the, the, the crowns that man is going to have. Salvation is far from the wicked. Now notice the verse does not say salvation is impossible. Jesus said about the rich, it's easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye. But he didn't leave out the impossibility. Christ died for all. But yet the Bible says many. Why does it say many? For God so loved the world. Because many will receive him, but not all. But the offer is there. Broad is the way that many will go therein. But straight is the gate to few. And in that implication of salvation for a wicked man is the fact is that a man will come to God any dispensation. 
and we'll see what God requires. And if he receives what God requires, he gets closer to God. Now, I don't know offhand how many years it's been since 1987 when I got saved in April 21st. But being 2014, July 16th, I am a lot closer to God than I was back in 1987. I know somebody who I witnessed to the day I got, the next day I got saved. That guy is further from the Lord, as far as to, from the Lord is as close as I am. Because he has rejected the salvation. And Noah's time, a guy would go up and say, ha ha, look at that idiot there. And Noah would start preaching. And that guy would turn his back. When he know nobody followed Noah. That guy turned his back and walked away, went as far as he could. Salvation was there. Where was it? According to the guy, it was far away. As further he walked away, the father of the salvation, the ship, or the ark. When a man comes to Calvary and says no and turns around, Calvary is getting farther and farther and farther. Not, not, not impossible. Because the Bible says all he has to do is repent with his mouth and conf I mean, repent with his heart and confess with his mouth. And he can be saved. Salvation is far from the wicked. For they seek not thy statutes. They do not want to do what God tells them to do. The statute for today to be saved is to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ minus nothing. For, great, for by grace are you saved by faith, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. That is the statute laid down. What about, the, what about the tribulation periods coming up? What did Brother Knox teach us the other night? That's for Jews. That law is for Jewish people. I'm going to leave a lot of Gentiles out. Jesus said the only way a Gentile will be saved in the tribulation is as a nation, their conduct to the Jew. You know, if it was a tribulation period right now, Hamas would, would be burning in hell soon. Because they're over there fighting right now, throwing missiles at, at each other. Great are thy tender mercies. I'll have to turn the page here to get on, but what an end of a page. Great are thy tender mercies. And there's a comma. Oh Lord. Not only did God save me, which I don't deserve. I don't deserve from Gethsemane to Calvary. The life of Jesus Christ. I don't deserve that. I don't deserve the Lord Jesus Christ going into hell to deposit my sins. I don't deserve that. I don't deserve to be carrying the gospel that I am saved by to a lost and wicked world. I don't deserve that. You know how precious that gospel is? When I tell someone that Christ died for their sins and was buried and rose again, I have now opened the door to heaven or to hell for that soul for all eternity.
And I sure don't deserve a crown for doing what he took. Listen, he's my God, my creator. I ought to be doing it just because he loves me. I ought to be doing it just because he did it for me. I ought to do it just because I am his servant. I ought not to have a preacher trying to rally me to go and do something that is purposed by God for me to do. The mercy of God is great that when I shed my last life and breath I will be with him for all eternity without pain, without sorrow, without tears, without breakdown in a new body forever to be in his. Listen, I can keep going and going and going for 14 hours, if not more, on what the mercy of God has done for me. The mercy of God, I was able to get out of bed and get dressed this morning. Oh, I didn't get it. Was able to get this morning. I mean, your mercy is you are alive. As a Christian, you know where you're going your last breath. It can be always worse than it is. And even if it can be as worse as it can be, God said He'll never in Corinthians, and it's not a quote from the verse, but. He never give you anything you cannot handle. And he'll give you a way that you can escape. That's mercy. Read what happened to Paul. Many are my persecutors and my enemies. Many. That's a lot. And my own personal experience, whatever word is under few, you know, you got the few, whatever word is under that doubled, that's how many people are going to walk with you in Christ. I guess you can say, not much. <laughs> you know what I'm thankful for? I'm thankful for, for something that many men complain about. When I'm doing what God tells me to do, go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. And I have a set time every week that I go down with signs or gospel tracts or, or I preach. I don't know how many years I've been doing that. I am thankful to the God's glory and his mercy and grace that when I sit there, my wife, who is my right hand, is there with me and supports what I do in the Lord. We read about some women tonight in our family Bible reading in Proverbs about a, a woman that causes arthritis pain to her husband. Gets down in his bones. Oh, can't stand it. My wife is not like that. She's right there with me, standing for Christ with a smile on her face while in pain. And there are Christians out there that their spouse is an enemy or a persecutor. Because they do right in the Lord.
Yet do I not decline from thy testimonies. You still stay in the Lord no matter who your persecutors are or who your enemies are. They're going to be there. You know what you get from Psalms? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I stay. But I... 157 verses so far. I know not all of them, but... My journey to verses we read, yeah, I have not forgotten. No, I have not declined. You know, you know Psalm 119 is telling you, don't quit the word no matter what. You better get used to the word because that's what's going to happen in heaven and in New Jerusalem. In good times, don't quit the word. In, in, in terrible times, don't quit the word. When enemies are coming, don't quit the word. You don't feel good. Don't quit the word. Listen, I have always been, if I've been so sick, I am bedridden. I try not to go three days without reading the word. I mean, there are some times, listen, you are so sick, you can't. There may be something going on in your life that you, know, you can't read the Word. Something that's happened. Don't try to go three days without the Word. Don't quit. Stay in it. Stick to the news. There's another word in the, old, in the New Testament. I can't think of what the word is. But steadfast. I beheld the transgressors. And was greed. We laugh at them today. We think they're a joke. We mock them. Yeah, but Ezra was so grieved that he pulled the hair out of his head and his own beard. Rent his clothes, showered his head with ashes, and repented and prayed to God. Because they kept not thy word. And there are people who God touches my heart. I see walk by and I look at them like they don't know what they're rejecting. When you when we're walking back, we pack up and we're heading to our car and you see all the tracks on the ground. It's like you don't know what you passed away. And that breaks my heart. One guy came to us one time. Oh, we ought to be passing out cheeseburgers. It's not a cheeseburger moment. I'll feed you a cheeseburger and a half hour, hour later, you're going to be hungry for another one. But what I feed you with right now, what I'm trying to show you is something that is eternal. You don't get out of hell. And when I see the little faces of children walking by, I'm praying that the sign will be in their heart. And it disgusts me that a parent will turn their children away. And I see that's your soul. If not your soul, the soul of that child. Serving the Lord ought to make you grieve. Yeah, there will be one or two people to make you laugh. But what about the others? Consider how I love thy precepts. We just got finished talking about the transgressor. He's grieved. They will die and burn in hell. He says, Lord, consider that precept. Quicken me. Give me salvation. Make me alive. O oh Lord, according to thy loving kindness. That loving kindness still goes in the transgressors, but they refuse. How 
How are you to feel from 158? I'll tell you how you should feel. What if you are a parent? And your child in your face cusses you out every way, left and right, north and south. Blasphemy you. Rebukes you wrongfully. Just gives you the, the H heck. And then turns around and walks away from you. How would you feel like that? Yeah, but how many people do that to God, their creator? And God still loves them. And God will love them to the great white throne judgment. Or to their death, really. When a man dies and goes into hell, God's love is gone. Until his last breath, he can get saved. I don't care how wicked he gets. Judas could have repented to Jesus Christ personally. And said, what did Jesus say to him in the garden? Friend, I have betrayed you. I am truly sorry. Can you imagine that would happen if Judas went to Jesus personally? And be, it's not recorded by but I'm saying if he had repented and gone to Jesus Christ, do you think Jesus would turn him away? Do you know that God worked on Judas' heart before he went to hell? It says he went to the priest, repented, and said, I betrayed the innocent blood. He just went to the wrong people and threw the money down. But Lord, those people that transgress against you, those people won't do. Lord, I love thy precepts. Lord, I love the Lord Jesus Christ. Quicken me, Lord. I forget. Is it 1 Thessalonians or 2 Thessalonians chapter 4, the rapture? And what are the last words in that chapter? Comfort one another with these words. That last verse in that chapter 4 is Psalms 119, 159. O oh Lord, according to thy loving kindness. How much did God love you? What was it between Gethsemane and Calvary? 24 hours? More, yeah, see, when they rested him in the middle of the night, the cock crew, that's morning. Then they deliver him to Pilate. And he, yeah, about maybe 12 hours. From the time that Jesus is praying in the garden to he says, it is finished and gives up the breath of life. That is how much he loves you. Can you imagine the pain that Jesus went through? And absolutely no medical relief. None. At all. Oh, by the way, when you die as a born-again Christian, you will never say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? At that moment, you take that last breath, and it's like, I believe you're going to be kneeling at the feet of Jesus. You're going to see the holy feet. I mean, holy and whole feet. That's what I believe. You will never at your death, as a saved, born-again Christian, ever say, my God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? Never. But God forsook his son. That you may live. 
that you may not be charged with your sins. That's the loving kindness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thy word is true from the beginning. The beginning of what? What are the first words in the Bible? In the beginning. Now, do you think the Solomon that wrote that said, Oh, let's see, I got to really think. It says, Oh, it says in the beginning. Let me. No, no, no that's, not, that's, that's the Holy Spirit saying, In the beginning, Genesis 1 1. Even before there was a Genesis 1 1. It says, A Genesis, you start reading. The chapter and the verse markings came long, 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 long time later. Thy word is true from the beginning. So without the chapter and verse marking, from the beginning of your word. So evolution is a lie. Right off the bat. And every one of thy righteous judgments endure forever. Okay, righteous judgments. Where are you going to see Noah? You're going to see him in, in glory. That's a righteous judgment, isn't it? That him and his whole family were saved from the, from the deluge. Where are all the people that was under Noah? Where, where are they going to be? They're going to be in the lake of fire for all eternity. That's a righteous judgment. What do you mean? God sent the whole population of the world into hell. He gave them opportunity. Well, what about the Native Americans? Were there two buffaloes on that ark? It had to be because there's buffaloes in North America. Don't you think it's strange that the Native Americans are like, why are all the animals parent? Look at that. There's a male and a female animal. Where are they going? Don't you think that some of these these these, these Indians, these Native Americans, these, these Aztec people, don't you think when they started seeing their animals pairing off that they didn't go follow? I guarantee that the entire world probably showed up at Noah's door just to hear the word. I, no, I can't prove that. but For God so loved the world, we're to go in all the world and preach the gospel. You know, caravans, hey, you know, there's this guy back over there, you know, he's throwing his stupid boat in the middle of the desert. You want to believe that? Yeah, we were over there. And, you know, we saw animals going in that ark. You saw animals going in that ark. I didn't see no animals. I know he was preaching. Yeah, I heard him preaching about it. Something, something. What was that? Oh, oh what was that? Uh, what did he say? Never heard of it before. Oh, man. What, something. Uh, I don't know. He said something. There's an idiot over there. Name is name is one of his children after a sandwich. What kind of guy is that? Yeah, we just went over there, and, you know. Instead of going to Disneyland, we took our family to go see that that idiot and all that. And he's been doing it all these years. And that I don't know what he said coming down. And those people died and went to hell. And do you know that in every civilization and tribe of this world, there's a story about a man who built the boat and all the animals were on there? And the world died and this guy and his family and the animals survived? And in the beginning was the Lord Jesus Christ, John 1.1. 1, 1. So, God is true. Jesus Christ is true from the beginning. And the righteous and judgments endure forever. The, 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 the sufferings that Christ did are forever to wash away my sins. How forever are they? Let me ask you a question, Christian. That new body, are you going to have a scar in it? Oh, I remember that. I had to put my bike. Oh, yeah, there was a nail in the tree. Are you going to have? No. I got scars on my body. I know one's on my leg. It was when I was a little boy with a bike chain. 
Can't remember what happened, but I remember that was a bike chain. But I'm not going to have those marks. I'm not going to have birthmarks. I'm not going to have freckles. I'm not going to have age spots. I'm not going to have anything that's on my body today. I'm going to be in a pure body, but the Lord Jesus Christ is going to be scarred in his hands and his feet, which endureth forever. There is no time in eternity. So when you're way off in eternity, and the Lord comes up to you and puts his arm around you, and you just see, Lord, why did you love me so much? And then maybe if you look down a lake of fire and say, hey, that's what I deserve. You just stare at that. Why do you think Jesus made such a big deal with time, Thomas? And he's like, oh, I'm going to throw it. Because you're going to stare at those hands for all your life. Imagine if we cast our crowns down like the 24 hours and Jesus comes over and hands you the crown. There's, there's the hole. Every step you make with him, there's the hole. Forever. Christ sealed you forever by the wounds in his body. That is love. That is salvation. Now let me ask you a question. What better way can you come up with for me to be saved? Peloton hmm? Magazine? Come on. Becoming the elite 144,000? Come on, you passed that number many years ago. Buying candles, buying beads, what? Killing someone else, shedding their blood so I can get virgins? Well, let me correct you something on that one. Once you have a virgin, you've done what you've done. She's no longer a virgin. You blew that one. And as much as rude as you treat your women, you're going to have them for eternal? Person you don't like? And you can't get rid of them because you're eternal. I guess. I don't know. Whatever that religion is. Uh, you're going to get your body in a weird position and, and hurt to be saved. You're going to try to go find yourself. That's going to get you into heaven. Your religion says, I may die and come back as a cockroach. And I'll be deaf by a can of raid. And come back as a minnow and get eaten by a shark. Come back by the fly and get a fly swatter. Come back as a cow and end up as a hamburger at Hooters. Come back, you know, when's it in? When? And what do you have better than Jesus Christ? And I'm not going to buy it. Because I have the word that the word is Jesus. And Jesus is the word. And I'm saved and I know it. And you're too stupid to believe on God to believe what I believe in. I don't know what else. 
I don't know how more I can explain and try to get to people the meaning of the gospel. They think I'm just yelling and screaming and being an idiot on the streets. I'm not. I'm trying to. I'm trying to tell you the way of the Lord Jesus Christ. And don't you see my wife and my family there are with me? Where is your wife and family? Where is your husband and family? Where is your sign of your salvation? We saw one time when we were preaching that. Well, we didn't, I didn't preach that day. We're passing out gospel tracks at the last race at the racetrack over behind us. You see these guys walk out with a fender of a car. Yeah, that's a great God. A guy crashes into the wall. That's his God. For once in his life, that guy made a right-hand turn in his life, and you walk away with a prize. Even Geico wouldn't appreciate a fender from a car. That means they have to pay it out. Maybe your God is alcohol. And, and, and the great serving of the great beer God in heaven, he gives you a bad liver. Wow, that's a great God. The great cigarette God, oh, holy sugar, oh, holy sugar, he gives you bad lungs. The great sex God gives you Diseases in places you don't want diseases. And yet God the Bible gives himself that you may have eternal life. And then turns around and will give you a new body. He'll give you hope. He'll give you no pain, no sorrow. Free of charge. By faith. And I weep because transgressors go along and think it's not worth it. Salvation. Very few will take it. And salvation can't be the Marines. Yeah, it's the few, but you don't get proud. I'm not proud that my Savior had to take all that for me. I'm not proud enough to go in some some city somewhere and break glass on stairs and go kneeling up and down the glass till I'm a bloody mess to think that I can do it myself. Salvation is in one, Jesus Christ. One sacrifice that he did for all that lasted forever. The righteous judgment. And by the way, that judgment that placed on Jesus, our sins, he will return and be judge against you. Saved or lost. Judgment seat of Christ or the great white throne judgment. I like to tell you, I like to see you walk up to Jesus and say, Judge not least you be judged. Yeah, watch this lady. Look what I did with all your sins. Now what do you have to say about it? Ooh -wee. You better believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. Nothing else needs to be said than that.
Salvation's plan is just a fairy tale, but their lies don't change the truth that Jesus died for you, and the word says his returning could happen any day. I'm gonna shout it from the housetops, proclaim it from the mountaintops, tell the world around me Jesus said. Tell the world. 